bum, bum, da 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 bum, bum, da. Hey guys, what's up? My name's Christine and you are seeing me break out. We are starting another NetGalley reading vlog and of course I am starting this at the end of my vacation. I know I've been doing 1,000 vlogs and you guys are like, when will you stop showing us the air, planes, and jet set life, but not good vlog footage? Guys, that's gonna end literally in this vlog. So thank you so much for joining me and sticking with me. As I mentioned, we are gonna be doing another NetGalley vlog. We are starting off with so we meet again by Suzanne Park. So I will check in with you guys at the 50% mark. I'm hoping I can get to it before I get on this flight. I have a couple of hours because this is a layover for me. So I'm hoping that I can get to it um, and check in with you guys before it ends. But basically this is about a young woman who works on Wall Street and gets fired from her job and then has to go back home and live with her parents while she figures out her life. Then she meets, I want to say like grade school nemesis, who is also back in town and he's super successful and she just got fired. So she's trying to prove to him that she is not a loser. And it sounds like a really fun romantic um, comedy. I'm really excited. Um, so I will check in with you guys and let you know about that. Okay, I'll check in with you guys in a little bit. So because I felt like I needed to do 50% check-ins for uh, So We Meet Again, then I started The Heart Principle <laughs> by Helen Wang, and I have no regrets. So let's just go ahead and do 50% check-ins for both of these books. So for So We Meet Again, I am really enjoying this book. I think that even though it is classified as a romance, I believe, I would say that it's not heavy on the romance. It's more about the main character just kind of finding her way because as I said before, she lost her job on Wall Street and is trying to figure out like what she's going to do back home in Nashville. So it's pretty cute. She definitely hates her like nemesis. You know, does he hate her? That is still to be seen. I have a feeling that he's actually in love with her and has been in love with her since the beginning of time but it's not like a cheesy romance it's really really interesting because she talks a lot about like business things so that's why it's interesting to me because like i don't really know that much about wall street like i don't really know that much about like banking i don't really know that much about starting my own company like i wouldn't know the first thing so it's pretty interesting and i like her dynamic with like her parents her friends i can really relate to this character because she has like worked in a big city and then moved Moved back home. I feel like how she feels almost every time I go home as far as like people asking questions about what she does and she's kind of like well you know I'm doing well. Am I this huge CEO of a company in New York? No. I'm really enjoying that part of the book but yeah I'm having a good time right now. It's looking like a four stars as far as like just like where we are. The pacing is really really good. It's hard for me to put down which is a good sign. Kind of just like speeding through it and it was really hard for me to be like okay look we need to start another book because we can't finish it all on this flight like a crazy person. But anyway, so that's 50% on So We Meet Again. So let's talk a little bit about The Heart Principle. So The Heart Principle is the third book for Helen, Miss Helen. Basically is about Quan. So if you guys have read The Kiss Quotient and The Bride Test, all of those books center around this one family. So it's kind of like get a life chloe brown but instead of it centering around the brown sisters it centers around i don't know i don't actually know what their last name is diep i think it's diep and d-i-e-p and something else i don't remember because michael from the first book is cousins with kai and kwan so anyway, but yeah, y'all, I'm having a really fun time. Like I read The Bride Test for the Tarot Readathon like a week ago. Loved that book. I love Kai, like so good, so freaking good. I had such a good time. Like I was speeding through it. Honestly, I liked it a lot more than The Kiss Quotient. And like I liked The Kiss Quotient, you know what I mean? So I had such a good time, like fun time with The Bride Test. Seriously, so good. And I was reading like a little bit about this because NetGalley like will send you information about the book sometimes and just kind of like give you a little preview and the editor was like this is not anything like the kiss quotient or you know the bride test like it's different it's special xyz da, da, da. so I thought that it was gonna be I was a little nervous because I was like 
does that mean this is going to be different? Like different, different? Because I love those two books. Like I really enjoyed them. And honestly, it was, it's been so unexpected because I, I mean, I thought that I would like them, but like, I really love their stories. <laughs> but yeah, I'm 50% through now. I don't know what it is about Miss Helen, but like y'all, her writing is so good. Like she, she has literally become a writer that I will buy her next book, like an automatic buy. Let me just tell y'all, if you read The Kiss Quotient and you were like unsure about it, you were like, eh, I don't know. You need to read The Bride Test and I think you need to read The Heart Principle. I'm obviously not sure about where the ending is going to go, but I'm about to go get some Starbucks because I have no groceries and I'm gonna finish this book this morning. So you guys will see me in the same exact t-shirt talking about the end of The Heart Principle. But let's talk about the book really, really quick. So this book follows Quan, who is like the last of the three like guys. He's like the oldest brother, Kai's older brother, and he's kind of had this reputation of being a playboy of the family. But but not like in a, a really douchey kind of way, more of just like, he just like has a lot of sex. Like he just gets the girls, you know what I mean? And so we start off basically from the first page, he has gone through like some kind of health issues. So like he hasn't been in the game for a while because he just had surgery. So he's like looking for like a hookup. And then this other girl, Anna, who the, cent the story centers around as well, she just found out that her boyfriend wants to have an open relationship with her and essentially told her in a few words that he wants to just like go and hook up with other people before they get married because he's just not sure but I want to be sure I want to be sure and I'm like it sounds like a good excuse to just go and like cheat on your girlfriend for a little while and then come back but anyway no judgments if you're in an open relationship but he didn't even in this specific situation he like didn't even ask her he was just like yeah we're gonna do this regardless of her feelings and that's annoying to me I'm like huh <laughs> Okay, that sounds like you need to break up to me, but whatever. So anyway, she starts seeing Quan, and apparently after their first night together, they don't stop seeing each other. It was supposed to be like a one night stand, but it's not. So it's, I mean, it's really good. It's really charming. And Quan, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like his perspective because I really didn't want to see that like, douchey side of him. You know what I mean? Like, but because he's been really caring cousin for Michael and he's been the older caring brother for Kai, all that to say he is a different person in this book than like what we've seen previously because he has gone through this health thing you know he's going through his own emotional internal struggle and I'm like this book is so special like this is so good guys like it's so good I'm like tearing up right now like can you see my eyes so I can understand what the editor is saying this is a special book it's like different than the other ones but also her writing is not like completely different so this is like a huge tangent but guys I'm just I'm having a good time like it's a 4.5 4. maybe a 5 do I dare this is definitely a game changer this is probably my favorite romance series of the year that I've read low-key it could be my favorite series I'm not sure so anyway we'll see how it ends obviously I don't want to give you guys too much details but I am telling you I am telling you to read it like I said how so we meet again is more about the main character Jess like her kind of figuring out her life this book is a true romance it's a true romance and it's so good it's so good because it also obviously has the like extra layer to the romance that i love you guys know that i love that kind of stuff anyway i'm just gonna go get my coffee so that i can finish this book because guys i'm like i said i was speeding through so we meet again i am speeding through the heart principle like it's so good i also need to pre-order it because i know i got in it got it in an arc but i need to own it i need to own it i can see myself re reading this series like multiple times anyway okay so i'm gonna go get my starbucks now that my cat has you know decided to take a nap and i will check in with you guys at the end oh, i don't want it to end it's so good <laughs> you this book just made me cry Ooh. <clears throat> hey guys, <laughs> my Starbucks. I also, um, I also just finished The Heart Principle and earlier I was telling you guys I didn't understand why the editor said this book was different and why it was special. 
I get it now. This book is different and it's so special. The writing is still top tier, still so good, but I understand there is a romance, but this book is definitely, definitely about Anna and it's definitely about her dealing with what happens in this book, her own mental health. And I don't want to give too much away. This book is so good, guys. I think I'm rating it a 4.5 stars. It's definitely not as much romance as the other two books. It's also written in first person, which I didn't notice at first when I was first reading it, while the other two books are written in third person. But Miss Helen, she said that this story is more personal because it's like the most similar to her life and yeah I was just I was reading the author's note and I started crying when she was like I'm not sure how this book will be received and I'm like it's so good. what do you mean it's so good but I can see if people weren't expecting it to be that serious maybe and they were looking for more of a romance I can see where they would maybe not like it as much I don't know y'all I think I think this book is pretty dang good definitely surprising love that we got to know Quan after seeing him in the first two books and yeah I'm definitely gonna be buying this book so good I'm so excited I can't wait to see where she goes with the rest of her books so yeah guys I got a good feeling I had a good feeling about this book I love it honestly nothing but good things to say about that about these three books the kiss quotient the bride test and the heart principle so i'm gonna finish so we meet again y'all i'm having an issue remembering that book title i'm gonna finish so we meet again and we'll come back to it i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to say about the heart principle like this book was just so good i can just relate to it i feel like there's everything i think that's all i want to say anyway we'll come back once I finish so we meet again and we'll chit chat a little bit. Okay guys, it's time to talk about the so while we so God, every time. So we meet again. We're gonna talk about the end of So We Meet Again. So I finally got to a hundred percent of So We Meet Again. It was a very fun ending. It definitely wasn't as romantic as I thought that it would be, if that makes sense. Like I thought that it was gonna be more of a romance, but I wasn't mad at how it was, if that makes sense. Because like I said, we were going on like Jess's journey and trying to like figure out her life. I thought it was really interesting because a lot of it was like super technical about, you know, how she made a business, about how she kind of like did things after she quit Wall Street, what she does with her life after that. So I thought that was super interesting. And also there were notes of feminism because like one of the issues she had working in Wall Street was um, there's a lot of sexual harassment and in this book it's like those things are mentioned and they're like talked about but sometimes in books I don't really know how to explain it other than it sounds kind of like preachy because obviously no one wants to be sexually harassed in the workplace but in this book it was just enough for me to care about it without me being like okay we get it does that sound insensitive I don't know but it was a good amount of that if that makes sense so like you kind of understood the world and you understood what she had to go through when she was at her old job so there was that and then and also I really liked her mentioning just like being a woman in the workforce and not only like a woman being an Asian American woman and how they have to work twice as hard like three times as hard five times as hard as not only white women in the workforce but like white men in the workforce which made it feel more real like the story felt more real because of that so yeah anyway I think I'm going to be giving it a four star rating but yeah I really enjoyed it I definitely recommend if you kind of want like I, I wouldn't say like a super romantic but if you kind of want like a atmospheric rom-com like this book literally made me laugh so much i was just like giggling who am i what am i doing um but it's because it's just so smart and quick i had a good time so it's gonna be a four star for me and also i really thought it was interesting talking about korean culture in the south so like nashville tennessee is where her parents are located and i just thought it was so interesting to kind of see her perspective of living there and kind of the community and how she outreached to that and yeah it was really cool like a lot so yeah four star hope this wasn't too rambly i don't even know what i'm saying so yeah overall i had a really good time with that and the heart principle which also made me lol but that was like a little bit more serious of a book so i'll see you guys in a little bit okay y'all we're at 50 percent of bad witch burning yes i was on set yesterday i love how i really try to do a cute little like vlog thing and they all have time to make them look cute questions and need answers. Let's talk about being at 50% of bad witch burning. So this is so interesting that I'm reading this book 
um, a month after I read The Taking of Jake Livingston because they're kind of, they're kind of low-key the same premise. Like, they're both witches. And Cottrell, who is the main character, she is figuring out that she can actually, like, resurrect people. And it's just such a different perspective. And it's definitely moving a little bit slower than, than The Taking of Jake Livingston just because I feel like at 50% right now, like, all the things that she could do right now have happened. So we have not gotten to the main conflict yet, the main like crazy thing that's gonna happen yet, because we've kind of just been doing sort of the same thing since like 30% of this book. So I have a theory about the resurrections because Cottrell is definitely not feeling well after she does them. And so I definitely have a theory about that. I feel like she's more connected to these people than she thinks she is. And I also feel like things are about to hit the fan very, very soon. Ooh. I have been stressed out in this book like a couple of times because there was like one part with her dog. And because I have a cat and like I'm a cat mom, like that stressed me out because I was like, oh my god. So she does not live in a good family home environment. So that's pretty stressful as well. I never know what's going to happen with that. Anyway, all right, so that's what's going on so far. Not really much, much to report because like I said, after like the main like 30%, pretty much the same thing has been happening for like the past, you know, 20% of the book. So hopefully things are gonna pick up and um, you know, the main conflict is going to happen and we'll figure out what's going on. But so far, like I'm enjoying it, not having a bad time, but I am kind of like, what is gonna happen? you know, what's gonna happen next. I definitely like this storyline a little bit more than the taking of Jake Livingston, I would say. I think I'll probably finish it today. And I'll check in later. Okay, everybody. I've officially finished Bad Witch Burning. I think I'm gonna settle at a 3.5 because like I was kind of saying in the last clip, it definitely took a while for things to kind of like progress once it got to a certain point. And it kind of stayed like that until like the very, very end. And then the reveal is exactly what I thought it was gonna be. So I was like, what even was the point? But I'm realizing that it wasn't, you know, to really explain the magic. It wasn't really like about the fantasy part of it. Truly, it was truly just about the story and like getting to know the character, which is fine. But it honestly could have just been like a YA contemporary about what was happening in this person's life. And then in this particular case, it just so happens that all the problems were solved with magic. Also, I'm leaning towards a 3.5 because there are so many questions that I still have. Like, I don't know. I feel like our main character just wasn't very insightful to herself about like her own powers. I don't know. I feel like you're smarter than this, but maybe not. So yeah, it's a 3.5. It like wasn't the worst thing ever, but like, was it a like a fantastic four? No, just because of the ending. Like we started off so high and then, you know, it just kind of was a little lackluster in the end. So yeah, I think that's what I'm going to settle on. I feel like I told you guys what this was about, but, but basically our main character is like a witch who can talk to the, the dead. She's like a medium. And then she realizes that she can actually like resurrect people. So obviously she gets into some trouble. The scenes with like the dog were like heartbreaking to me. I was like, oh my god, this is so sad. So like I wasn't a huge fan of that. It was honestly kind of stressful to read a little bit. And it didn't really have like a witchy vibe, a witchy setting, a witchy atmosphere. It was more, like I said, more of a YA contemporary with like, you know, her being able to do these magic things as like a back burner detail. Not exactly the magical realism that like I would want in a fantasy, but Anyway, hey guys. Okay, so I hit the 50% mark of Reclaimed last night, but it was dark and I was tired, so I didn't want to do my like recap. Um, But essentially one or two pages before I hit the 50% mark, like the the thing happened, like the, the plot twist, the thing that tells you what's going on happened. And I was like, oh, 
this is crazy so i'm interested to see how this book is gonna like continue because now that the thing has happened there has to be some kind of like conflict to like either solve the issue or everybody just like ends up being cuckoo bananas by the end of it so i'm excited because i feel like this the pacing of the book has been pretty good feeling like it's about to get super super quick now that the thing has happened i'm gonna go sit outside and read a little bit fully finish this book i can't wait it's gonna be a fun time okay so guys we are in the last little bit of this net galley reading vlog so i just wanted to recap the end of reclaimed because i realized i read that book really late at night and i didn't do a hundred percent check-in so let's go over all the books really quick my recommendations and my final ratings for these titles. The first book that we're going to be talking about today is of course The Heart Principle. This was my favorite book out of all of the Net Galley arcs that I got last month and it's no shock that this book is coming in at a 4.5 stars. This follows Anna Sun who is a violinist that goes viral and is having a little bit of creator's block because she feels like she can't live up to that viral sensation expectation. So when her boyfriend tells her, tells her mind you doesn't ask her tells her that he wants to be in an open relationship she decides that she is going to have as many one night stands as she wants lo and behold she ends up having a one night stand with our wonderful Quan, who is one of the main guys in the kiss quotient like series and it's not just a one night stand a plot twist it's actually there are some hiccups and bumps along the way, but that's basically the premise of the story. And like I said in the clips, I really, really loved this book. It is different than the first two in this series, but it was definitely insightful for me. And I just feel like Loki, everybody should read this book. So I thought it was really, really good. It is not as romance oriented as the first two in this series but there is some hot steamy moments and this book made me cry this book made me cry hmm so that is the heart principle i have nothing but good things to say about this book and i hope that if you end up reading it you will too this book is going to be coming out on august 31st so mark your calendars the next book that i want to be talking about is so we meet again by suzanne park this follows a young woman who works on wall street and gets fired so she has to go back home to her parents house in tennessee and figure out what she's going to do with her life at the supermarket she sees her childhood nemesis who is doing super well and she realizes that she might hate him even more now than she did when she was in sixth grade. So it's a cute little romance. This one again is not a super super romance heavy book but I still had a really good time with it. The romance scenes that we got were super cute but it wasn't like steam level was not very very high okay so i ended up giving this book a four stars i had a fun time i really liked the tennessee kind of atmosphere that we got to be a part of and overall i feel like it was a fun book is it the romance that you may want i don't think so so if you're looking for a romance maybe not the one but it was a it was still a fun time and i was laughing the entire time i was reading this book like it was seriously so funny so that book came out august third so if you're interested you can get it now okay so the next book on this list is reclaimed by madeline rue Rowe. anyway this book follows a young woman who has gone through a terrible tragedy and wants to get her memories erased so she signs up for this program where a couple of other people have volunteered to get their memories erased and after the first session she realizes that there may be more of a catch than just taking her bad memories this was a really fun futuristic sci-fi and i'll also use this as kind of like my wrap up for it the last 50 percent, i was like what a wild ride this book is so freaking crazy like what's happening but very futuristic and surprisingly there were some like kind of graphic scenes like overall i had a really fun time with this book i ended up rating it a 3.5 stars 
um, you know, it was a fun time. It was a good time. Did I want a little bit more from the conflict? Yes. And a little bit more from like the mystery? Yes. Because once it all got revealed, I was like, ooh. But it was a good time up until that point. So 3.5 stars for Reclaimed. And that comes out August 17th. So if you're interested in that book, that's when you can get it. Okay, guys, last but not least, we're going to talk about Bad Witch Burning. You know how I feel about this. I felt like the first 50% of it, all the stuff happened. And then it was like after the 50% mark, where do we go from here? Also was a little bit frustrating because from like the 30% to the 50% mark, we kind of stayed in the same area. Nothing really changed. The same kind of stuff was happening. And honestly, I didn't really see a point in having the magical aspects because nothing was really explained with that. It didn't really go anywhere. This book honestly could have just been a contemporary the magic stuff out because it was more focused on the issues of the main character in her day to day rather than figuring out her magic, figuring out the source of it, how it works, the issue. That's really what I thought this was going to be and it wasn't that at all. It was more about her normal day to day issues which is fine there were like really important topics that came up in the book and important themes but I was expecting a little bit more from the magical point of view the magic side of it so because of that I am rating this one a three stars because it was just kind of like wah wah you know like it was good for the contemporary part but like the magic part was not and I'm like if you're gonna have magic in a book let's have some magic in a book oh Anyway, so that's what I ended up rating that one. Plus there was that one scene with the dog. It was not a fun time for me personally. I didn't like it. And I was stressed out reading this book because I wasn't sure what was gonna happen. And obviously you don't know what's gonna happen in books, but like I was truly like nervous for our main character and it stressed me out for a majority of the book, so. Anyway, so that book is coming out August 24th. If you're interested, then that is when you can get that book. So quick rundown because the sun is going down. I think I covered everything. We did four books. I was supposed to also read The Pariah, but I didn't get to that this month. So I'm going to get to that eventually. Night Galley, I promise. But yeah, other than that, I had a pretty successful Net Galley month. Obviously my fave, as I said before, was The Heart Principle. So. This is literally crazy. Okay, y'all, so y'all saw. <laughs> you saw what happened yesterday. All I can say is someone was on the loose. Um. Anyway, so I just wanted to end this video officially and say to you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like for us. Comment down below if you are enjoying the NetGalley reading vlogs. And if there's anything from this vlog that you're actually planning on reading this month, some exciting titles. The heart principle and yeah if you guys would like to support me and monique on this channel go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell if you don't want to miss another video from us thanks so much for sticking around um and i'll see you guys in the next one you want to say bye do you want to say bye to the camera sweet boy bye about to fall asleep. <laughs>